my dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the sainthood of Saint Francis Xavier, the great missionary of Europe to this country, this particular gospel passage is very relevant. Jesus speaks about how to live our life according to his word. He is to be found and only when he is found by us, only when he is found by us as a treasure, as a pearl of great value, only then we will sell everything joyfully. And that's what Jesus said. He spoke about our treasure hidden in the field. Someone finds it and hides it again and goes and sells everything he has because he feels nothing is worth compared to this treasure hidden in the field. And again, a merchant, he finds a pearl of great value. He realizes the value of this pearl is greater than anything that he has. And he sells everything joyfully and goes and buys that pearl. This is how the Lord is to be accepted into our life. There are two words that Jesus uses which are very relevant for us to know. One, finding the treasure, finding the pearl. Two, sells everything joyfully because nothing one has is of any value compared to the treasure compared to the pearl that he found unless the merchant finds the pearl and the pearl becomes a fascination he would never sell everything he has because a merchant will be holding on to whatever he has, his possessions, his fortunes. And all of us are like that. We hold on to many things in this world. Our prestige, our money, our power, our families, and whatever else we think is dear. We will hold on to them, cling on to them. And we'll be a we will be able to let it all go only when a greater treasure, a treasure, a pearl of greater value will become a fascination. That's exactly what happened in the life of St. Francis Xavier. Francis Xavier was born in 1506 in Navarre, in a castle of an aristocratic family, savior family. But then he lost his father when he was very young, when he was only nine years old. And then in the Spanish invasion, this aristocratic family lost everything lost everything except the ca castle and the young man Francis the one desire the one motivation in his life was to recapture all the fortunes lost all the fortunes of the family and for this he went to the University of Paris to study to study, to become 
a great professor to become a man of learning man of wisdom and man of money and man of power once again the head of the aristocratic family but God's plans were different there was a roommate in his room where he lived and that was Saint Ignatius of Loyola who himself had a transformation in his life when he was wounded in a war and Ignatius of Loyola began to talk to Francis and Francis spoke of his vision of his mission in life of the great thing he wanted to do in life to become famous a man of the world a man to be noted a man to be taken serious by everyone by the history of the world by recapturing all the fortunes lost but one word that St. Ignatius of Loyola would tell Francis Matthew 16 26 Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 Francis you could gain the whole world but if you lose your soul what profit is to you in the beginning Francis ignored then he rejected but that word became a disturbance in his heart a word that became a disturbance became a delight in his heart and that delight brought about the great conversion and transformation in the life of Francis hallelujah shall all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, in his encounter with Ignatius of Loyola, Francis found the treasure. He had thought the treasure of his life is this world, the name and fame and riches of this world, the castle of this world. This was in his eyes, in his mind, the treasure the pearl that he need to earn but he thought that treasure that pearl is of no value at all compared to the great treasure that Jesus Christ what he wanted was what he wanted was the castle and the fortunes of this world God's plan was to give him the whole world the whole world as his own and that's how he comes to India and landed in the shores of Gova to preach the word of God at the insistence of the king of Portugal Ignatius of Loyola sends him to India in fact there also was by accident to others to other priests were supposed to come to India but one priest who was chosen became ill and that's when Francis was chosen to come to India but everything according to God's plan God wanted to give India to Francis when Francis offered himself in the hands of God and God's plan was being realized my dear sisters and brothers Francis would have made a waste of his life he would have gone after the corruptible things of this world and all that Francis would have earned would have been corrupted but today the body of Francis Savior remains uncorrupted in Gova because this was a man who found the treasure that Jesus was the treasure of his life 
This is a man who was so wise to sell everything joyfully. When he abandoned the castle, abandoned his riches and fortunes and wisdom and learning, he did it not with the regret. He did it all with great joy because he realized the one thing to do in life is the will of Jesus Christ. And that's why we have the good fortune to honor the uncorruptible body which is exposed now in Gova. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what reveals to us a great truth. What is it that is lasting in this world? I could become a rich man. I could become a famous man. I could be adored by a whole country. And yet, many such rich men Many such big women, many such great lives, what the world counted as great, have come and gone and got corrupted. But the uncorrupted body of Francis Xavier remains today for us to venerate. What is uncorruptible in this world, what's lasting in this world, what's lasting in this world is only Jesus. Jesus, who is the pearl of great value. Jesus, who is the treasure, the treasure that should be gained by every one of us. It's good for us, my dear sisters and brothers, to ask ourselves, what am I living for? What's the purpose of my life? What do we think is the purpose of my life? What do we think is the will of God for me? A question often people ask, Father, what is God's will for me? If you continue to ask that question, at every moment of our life, the Lord will reveal God's will. You know, there are people who want to become big, want to become great, want to make life secure and safe in the future want to gain the whole world and become rich at the end of it all everything gets corrupted a life is wasted the life that remains uncorrupted is the life that's offered in the hands of God and that's what Jesus said come to me you who are tired and burdened, I will give you rest. Francis Xavier came to Gova. From Gova, he traveled by the coast line. You know, when here in Kerala, in the state of Kerala, especially in this district, when we celebrate the sainthood of Francis Xavier, there's something fortunate. Francis Xavier was the second apostle to India. The first apostle to India was St. Thomas, the disciple of Jesus. And both these great apostles landed here in this port. St. Thomas the apostle landed in Kodungalur, just, just a few kilometers from here in AD 52. And he preached God's word here. And St. Francis Xavier stayed a whole winter in a house just three kilometers from here. This particular district is blessed for having heard the preaching of the two great apostles of India. Hallelujah. 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 No wonder. About 60% of the population in this area are Catholic because of the preaching of the two great missionaries that God has sent to this country, to our country. My dear sisters and brothers, let us, let us look into our hearts and hear, hear 
the question of Jesus. The question Jesus asked Simon Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than everything else? More than everything else. Only if I love Jesus more than everything else, only then will I be able to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus is not to be confined to a half an hour on a Sunday, no. My purpose of life is to love him, is to live for him, is to surrender my life totally to him so that whatever the plan of God for me may be realized in my life. Living for Jesus, committing my life to the Lord, understanding to live for him is the greatest joy of my heart. Nothing else. To live for him is the greatest joy of my heart. When, when I realize this great insight, that's when I find Jesus. A moment of finding, find Jesus as the rich treasure, as the great pearl. And then nothing else will be of importance to me. Nothing else. I wouldn't care, I wouldn't care to make my life secure by the craze to amass wealth. I wouldn't care to be respected by others. I wouldn't care to, to be known by others. I wouldn't care to be, to be venerated by everyone. No. All that I care for is Jesus. And that's what St. Paul said. Philippians chapter 3 meditating on his own conversion St. Paul said beautifully all I want is to gain my Jesus and to gain him I have just abandoned everything I consider everything as useless the word that St. Paul uses is I abandon everything as a refuse. What's the refuse? Refuse is what we throw into a, a bin to be thrown away. I don't care. All that I want to hold on is my Jesus. All I want is to experience Jesus as the joy of my heart. The pleasures of this world, I don't care. The gains of this world is of no concern to me. All I want is to be one with Jesus, to be found one with him. What St. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 onwards, I want to know. I want everyone to know. Everyone to know the depth and the height and the width and the breadth of the love of Jesus Christ and I want the whole world to know this this rich treasure that I have found I want everyone to find my dear sisters and brothers when you and I are able to experience Jesus as the richest treasure in life God will do one thing. God will send us to proclaim this truth. God will anoint us with the Holy Spirit and send us to tell everyone what's the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to live for Jesus and make everyone know him and live for him. In fact, Francis Xavier lived only for 46 years and on December the 3rd he died alone in a small island near China and it seems Savior shivering with fever was filled with the comfort and consolation 
and joy of the Lord. And he died telling Jesus, Lord, enough. I'm so filled. I can't take more of your joy. I can't take more of your heavenly comfort. Every cell of my body is filled with your heavenly comfort. I'm rewarded more than what I deserve. Oh Lord, enough. I'm so filled. So much of joy. So much of love. So much of peace. A great feeling. I have made the best of my life. That's the feeling we must die with. We must live with. I have made the best of my life. I have not wasted my life at all. I have, I have made the best of my life. And God has made the best of my life today. Let's make a very clear, a very clear decision. I will not allow my life to be wasted, my body to be corrupted. Sin will corrupt our body. Sin will waste our life. The pursuit of riches and pleasures will destroy us. If you want to remain uncorrupted forever in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the world, it is to opt to be a saint. To be a saint. In fact, India is fortunate. Two saints were declared Indian uh, a man and a woman and more saints should come from this country. For the whole world, India should become a place of saints, a fertile ground where saints are born. Saints sprout up and become great examples for the whole world. You know, India has a rich spiritual heritage and this spiritual heritage should produce saints for Jesus Christ. Saints who understand the beauty of living for Jesus. Saints who live out the commitment to Jesus in such a way we can become missionaries. Who is a missionary? Missionary is a person with a mission. A mission for others. Whenever I find someone sad, someone ignorant, someone wasting his life, I should know I have a mission. I cannot leave him in that way of wasting his life. I have a mission. I have a mission for him, for her. A mission to proclaim Jesus to to proclaim that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the joy of living. That Jesus is the goal of our life. A man with a vision, with a mission. A woman with a mission is what we should become in order to make this world beautiful. To make this world a place where God's kingdom will be coming. For every one of us, for us and our children, let us be able to surrender our life in the hands of Jesus so that we may experience him as the pearl of great value, our treasure, that we may convey this to our children, to our neighbors, and wherever we are to everyone, so that this world may become a world worth living in as St. Francis Xavier has left this world for us. Amen.